Greetings all, welcome back and welcome to the second part of my TL01 build. Uh, actually, this is the first part we're actually building the, the car. The first video was just an introduction. Um, now, before I get cracking with the build, I want to explain just what's going on here and here. First of all, with the camera, I've removed the external mic for this video. Uh, a lot of people have said and it's really quiet and I've noticed that while editing, it's really, really quiet. And uh, the GoPro Hero 4 doesn't respond well at all to having an external mic. I need to use it outside, however, though, because you only have that option. You can you can have it sealed in the camera, sealed in to stop the wind noise in its sort of uh, the, the the full case, whatever they call it. But the problem with that is you get muffled sound, and then you get the horrendous creaking and squeaking noise through the case that drives me mental. So you can cure that by using the skeleton case, which is, which is exposed. You don't get the creaking, you don't get the muffled sound, but then you also just get horrendous wind noise. So for outside the external mic is necessary, but for here, right now, I'm going to give that a try and see how it comes out. Now this here might look like a fancy jig, or might not, but what it is, is my guitar stand with my phone on top of it. And that's so that I can uh, have a video footage coming down here, and you can see what's going on with my hands and the instruction manual, etc. And I'm just sort of going to swap and change between the two focal points. Now, I opened the manual and immediately saw that the first step here, um, is uh, attaching the servo horn etc to the servo itself. Now, I'm not looked inside this yet, I'm mean, looking forward to seeing what this is like because uh, on basically back in the day you got the ACOMS Techni Plus which is amazing, in fact hold that and I won't get one. Right, here we are with the ACOMS Techni Plus, this is a brilliant transmitter, I've always loved these. These used to come with your Tamiya kits, if you bought them in BTs or whatever. Um, you'd have this with it, and this uh, came with a cheap servo as well, so you've got everything in there. Now, uh, people have realised, manufacturers have realised, and Tamiya have realised that people miss this. People miss these really comfortable Techni Plus uh, transmitters and the, the cheap packs with the servo in it. It's quite inexpensive and still really good quality. Um, now, they've tried to bring that back, because if you see on the website for this, Carson, what's it called again? Uh, Reflex Pro 3.1 that they say that it's bringing back the sort of feel and quality and uh, you know the, the, the comfort and the ergonomics of the original Techni Plus, well it's actually not the original Techni Plus but for that Techni Plus um, they try to bring it back with this and also it has the servo with it just like the old one. Now the thing is about the old previous version of this, the Refre Reflex Pro, I think it was just the number 2 or 2.0 or something that was really horrible quality, it really wasn't good at all and it felt nothing like the old Techni Plus. So I'm really hoping this has the same ergonomic, chunky round feel. What it doesn't have is the metal sticks. These are metal sticks and they're also fatter and wider, to, to, you know, it's really comfortable on your thumbs. Um, now that doesn't have that, but we'll give it a shot. Let's see what this is like then, I've never seen this before. Let's check for my I won't deal with that actually, I won't deal with that right now. So, what have we got here? I'm really a please be good. Because I tell you what, I would pay someone, if you're, if you're watching this and you can do this sort of thing, because I've actually opened up a Techni Plus to see if I could get 2.4 gigahertz uh, gubbins inside it uh, to use a, a proper 2.4 gigahertz one of these, but uh, I've not found a 2.4 system where the lot all lines up with the sticks and etc. And I could make it work with one of my other transmitters up there, a cheap one that I use for my Madrat, but you'd lose all the functionality. You would get the steering throttle, but you'd lose everything else. You'd lose the, the trim adjustment and the, the end points and all the rest of it. And uh, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. So, let's see what we've got here. Please be good, please be good. Bringing back the old Tammy I feel. Right, very light, but there's no batteries in it. Um, narrow, very narrow, you know, it's, it's not nearly as chunky as that, you can see the difference there, it's much chunkier. Here you go, see, camera, see how this works, that's quite cool that. Um, let's have a look. It feels nothing like it, it feels nothing like the Technipus at all, um, even though they're trying to sell it as a sort of modern version of it. 
uh, it doesn't feel as well screwed together. There's, there's play. For, for example, there's up and down play on that stick. This stick is up and down play. And on this stick, there's left to right play. Whereas, there's none of that with the old Technic Plus. None of that at all. So this is still better made than the newer ones. It does have this sort of rounded edge there, which is nice. That, that is similar. And it's relatively comfortable. Not as comfortable as the old Technic Plus, but yeah, okay, no problem. Uh, oh, that It does have quite a lot. Look at the play there. Can you see it on that camera? So that's the up and down play. That shouldn't move up and down at all. And this one shouldn't move left to right. So there's a bit of play. Uh, I don't think it'll, no, I don't think it'll ruin the experience, but uh, okay. Fine, but not as good as the old one. I'm not really surprised. Right. We'll, we'll hit the chair, we'll hit the chair. Right, what we're trying to do right now is get this uh, servo. This will be a very basic, slow, cheap servo, but it'll be fine for a TL01 because that's what it's all about with this sort of car. is isn't a Schumacher racing car or anything. Now, it says here that bag A is for use all for steps 1 to 11. So we're on step 2. I don't know what step 1 is. Checking the equipment or well, whatever. B10. B10. There's B10. It is the servo horn. Now, with Tamiya things. Is that still recording? Oh, this is great. Yeah, look at that. With Tamiya things, um, there was always a little burr left over because you've got to snap it off this tree here. So I've just brought these sharp snip things and I'm going to just snip, snip the bars off. Now, it says here that we need to use C6. So we've opened B, now we need to open C. Which is this one? That's C. C. Are these both C? Yeah, they're both C apparently. C6 will be in this one. There it is there. Now, I think about C6. Ah, oh, wait a minute, no, these are, these are mirrored. That's what it is, these are mirrored. See, you can see how long it's been since I built a Tamiya kit. These are mirrored. Now, I won't need to use these because I bought the GPM kit. So, rather than, yes, rather than C6, we will use these two GPM parts. But we do need to use MA2 metal bag A, two, some plastic bits, right, I assume what we're looking at is, or are, these, MA2, two of, yes we are, where's the other one, ah, no, we're not using the Tamiya bits at all, I'm all over the place here today, we're not using the Tamiya bits because these GPM parts came with their own screws, didn't they? Yes, they did. Where, ah, there they are. GPM ones are different. GPM ones are better. Right, so I hit my first minor snag. As I was explaining there, you're supposed to use two of these, which is C6 right here, and they would sit side by side on this servo arm and very very close almost touching but you know just enough clearance now GPM have included these two to replace them they're adjustable these are for the camber now I initially screwed it on that way because um, it seems natural to have the ball stud end you know at the outside so you can pop it on and off but because uh, that's why you know if you're, if you're going to repair something or take something on and off in the front suspension or even the back suspension you've got one of these you usually just need to pop the ball end off but you can't do that on this car because what they've intended GP have intended is that you have it if you look in this camera that way with this side exposed to the to, to the wheel etc and then you use two ball studs there but they didn't include any with the kit so I've actually managed to find a couple and uh, hopefully it'll thread in nicely. So, this should now just, there we go, see? See, that's better, nice, nice. B2, that's not even round. <laughs> Good one, Tamiya. So, look, 
on there. It's a small screw it goes through there, which is round on the picture, but it's kind of uh, like a donut with a flat end on this side. It's got the flat part, not that it matters, but anyway, there you are. Yeah, there's no real burr on that, so I won't bother with the burr there. So this goes in top of here, just like that. And then we need MA5, which is, there's one of them in the back. Right, obviously these are now redundant, I don't need these, but I'm setting them aside. I give it a bag B, here's bag A. There's bag A. MA5, self tapping screw. We need one of those. There's one, that's perfectly adequate. This is where I need to get the, unfortunately, get the uh, Phillips screwdriver out because, tell me, I like to use crosshead stuff still. B6 for the servo saver. Am I finding C? Have I found C again? See if I found C again. Go away, C. B. This is it here, B6. Okay. I'm so out of practice when it comes to Tamiya kits. Or any really, really any kits. I've not built a kit for ages. I think the last kit I built was. Go line, maybe? It's a while ago, anyway. Right. Boom. Should have actually started there. Never mind. Now, <laughs> this is a great video. Now, it says here that the Samoa ACOMs JR and KO, um, that'll be a KO Pro Co and JR, I can't remember what JR is, uh, need the B11 and Futaba and Tamiya ones, uh, so I always use B12. Now, this is neither, this is a Carson Reflex, so I don't know which one's which, which one will be the appropriate. I don't know what fitting they use. If these are an ACOMs fitting, if these are Futaba fittings, I don't know what they use, so I'm just going to try them. See what's see what's what. That is not the correct one. So it's not B11. It'll be B12 for the Carson Reflex radio system servo. So let's try that. B12. B12 is there. Snip off the bars. Obviously, I need to get the servo centered. I should really center that now, shouldn't I? I shall center it. You need to open everything. I also need to put batteries in this new transmitter. Just put the batteries in this. Ooh, it's blue. It's got one of these annoying, you know those little boxes in the back? Rather than having the mounts for the battery built in, it's this box that you can remove, which I've had experience before. If, if it gets a little bit damp or whatever, you left it in the boot of your car or whatever, um, these can corrode because they're so thin, but uh, I won't be doing that, so hopefully it'll be okay. But, What's wrong with just building it into the transmitter itself? But still, blue. Cool, no problem. Right, let's make sure the throttle and steering is centered. Lovely, 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 lovely. Now, I have the ESC somewhere. Ah, the Hobbywing ESC. Here it is. Ooh, stickers, lovely. This is the 1060. It's a nice little suit, yeah, see? Ah! Ah! It's got a Tamiya plug! Right, it's the next day, um, which is okay because I have another Tamiya t-shirt. This is for you guys' benefit, obviously, because uh, otherwise you would have no idea it was the next day because the transition was so seamless. Since yesterday, I have um, completed the servo mount. Now, I did make a mistake yesterday, as you're well aware. This page here, it looked like, sort of, oh, check, this is charged, and look, get this all plugged in, blah, blah, blah. And I sort of ignored it, but you're supposed to start here. So I've done this now. Uh, one thing to be mindful of is the pictures here have this sort of uh, rounded section on the, the servo mount blocks facing upwards, where mines are facing downwards, because if you look here, if you have less than 14 minutes, uh, millimeters between the, the top of the spline and this tab, which is here to there, um, then you have to have them the other way around. The mines is 13 mil, so I've got them the other way around. Right, so anyway, we're cracking on with this. What we need now is uh, one MA3 and five MA4s. 
But the bag of screws is here. Now, I think M4 is just the standard ones, yes. So one, two, three, four, five of them, and the one M3, which is here. Boom. Now, what we also need is A1 chassis part. Here's the chassis. Here's the chassis. Didn't sound right in my head, but actually here's the chassis. A perfectly grammatically correct se uh, sentence. Now, which one is this? Is this the A1? I don't know, actually know if this is. Um, I don't actually know if this is uh, marked. Is it? It looks like it looks like certainly looks like this one. Um, that. I'm not entirely sure. The left hand side chassis. That would be left as you're looking at it. Ah no, this is it here. This is it. This is chassis part A1. Now, it has some pretty awful awful burrs on it as well, so let's get rid of the burrs. I don't want any burrs on my nice Tamiya when it's finished. Right. So we want the chassis around this way and we're gonna put the servo through. Right, I've centered this servo now. It is nice and centered. Now we want it that way up. We want it through that gap, is it? Seems to be. This should now... Ah, okay. I was wondering why that one there, this one, is the only uh, MA3 screw getting used. I was wondering why there isn't two, because this is on a sort of slider an adjustment there so you can slide it back and forward so that makes sense and like there so let's get this one in first can't remember if these are magnetic nope oh well oh well get in there you pig boom right fire this up now uh, one of the reasons I started again today and left it yesterday was the sun had already started to fade, the light was fading and the, the GoPro gets really bloody grainy. In fact it's probably not getting that, even though this is now what, half past two in the afternoon, it's probably already graining up. Um, I was behind time yesterday because I was making a new intro for the channel and that took a lot longer than I expected and then by the time I started this video it was about four o'clock or past four o'clock even in the afternoon so it started to get a bit dark and uh, there's no point in you guys watching a video that's all grained up it's pointless pointless when i could just wait till the next day okay upside downy servo upside downy servo is mounted upside downy Ah, okay, that's what these are for. We need C7 and C18, which are here. I'm trying to keep the... I, I'm instinctively trying to pull the instructions towards me, but I need the, you, you know, the, all this motif going on. Right, C, C, B, B. Is this C? This is probably going to be B as well, isn't it? Oh, C. Hey. C18. C18 is this part. I remember these bits. This is bringing back memories. Oh yeah. This is the Nostalgia series after all. Just reminding myself of that. Yeah, the reason I got this T01, the reason I overpaid for what it is, is because this was my first hobby grade car and I wanted to go down a wee trip down memory lane. But as some of you have seen, if you've seen the, the first video, the previous owner made an absolute mess of the body shell so had i known i would not have actually bought this car i would have waited however we'll make the most of it i mean there is something i could do in that tammy i make the jägermeister orange uh, 155 body shell for the uh, t tto2 now what you could do is get that shell um custom spray paint it to have the Bosch paint job on it, which might be an option for me in the future. It wouldn't be exact, but it'd certainly be a damn sight better looking. 
So we have this part that goes uh, through these holes, boom, and then that one goes beside it. So we'll get these ones done first. I remember, because I was very young when, it, when this got built, my dad built me this car when I was little. Because I was very little when I got this, very young. And um, you know, he had it working, I think he spent two days or something building it. And then in 2002, Christmas 2002, I got my lossy triple XS, he built that as well. I, unlike this time, you know, when, the, when he built this time, th this one, the first time around, I was just young and stupid and I didn't really, you know, understand the way the world works too well. But when, when the lossy was getting built, I was maybe, oh, 2002, Christmas 2002, early 2003, so I would have been uh, 16 years ago, that would have been about 30, I would have been 15, 15 years old. So I was sitting watching and learning. So although he built it, I was learning. And uh, I remember him saying, how superior the lossy was in terms of designing materials. And I mean, this is, oh, don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing uh, Tamiya, I do love Tamiya. And uh, this is a great car for someone doing what I'm doing here, just having a bit of a nostalgia trip and blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, this, this now doesn't look like a chassis. It doesn't look like anything is being designed with handling in mind or anything. It just looks like something to bolt stuff to, which is what I said about Traxxas cars before. Whereas, you know, a proper chassis, every single little component is thought out to try and maximise performance. So on the Triple XS, for its time, obviously things have moved on now, um, everything, every design was tweaked towards performance and handling and uh, as a result the car was one of the very, very best in the world. And that's what my dad was saying as he was, as he was putting it all together and as things clicked in his mind, oh that's what we're building, oh that makes really, that's really clever, that makes a lot of sense. And you wouldn't have got any of that with this. This would be like when I was building the lunchbox, for example, which is the first Tommy I kit built, I built for a long time. I think my first time I kit I built my own was the TTO one, and then I built the lunchbox. And then the lunchbox, I was like, this is, is this a chassis? What is this? What is th this doesn't make sense. And there's all these screw holes that weren't getting used and blah, blah, blah. I was like, right, okay, whatever. All right, but it's beginning to resemble something I recognize. Now, this is what it says four plastic ba uh, bushings, it says bearings, so these are bushings. These are these here, but I'm not even going to use these because I, I paid for a, uh, I bought a um, bearing kit from Captain Hobby on eBay. I don't know who Captain Hobby is, but uh, he's got the right idea. Now where be, where be the bearing kit from Captain Hobby? It's in here somewhere. <laughs> Go on Captain Hobby, don't let, don't let me down here. There we are. There's the bearing kit. That still amuses me. Do I need to snip it open or will it rip open? No, oh, that's real rip open. Right, I need four. Now these are all the same size, I believe. Yep, one, two, three, four. There they are. Now, obviously, you just saw me open these, so let's give them a check. Nice. Because they were cheap. Well, they weren't massively cheap. They were 10, 11 pounds or something, which is normal for bearing kits, but I'm just making sure they're not horrible and they've been leaking or anything. Okay, so what we need now is the, oh, we need more than that. We need the bearing and we need two of these. I think they're in here, are they? Oh, I almost opened this and it doesn't look like they are. Are they in here? Yes, they are. The little posts, what do they call them? Little shafts, little actual shafts. Um, two of them in here. Please don't get everything everywhere, Mike. There's one. No, there's only two, so these will be the right ones, but I'll still measure for size. Where did you go? Stop playing hide and seek with me and show your face. Actual shaft. You know what's really annoying is I, uh, I just decided to, to set up the cameras, as in the camera and my phone, to do this video and then just at that point, my fridge decides to do that thing that my fridge does where it becomes the loudest component in the world. But I hope it's not disturbing you too much. I could always try and find some video music overlay thingy, my bob. Right, so here we are. We have the bends, we need the actual shaft. Now I did see that, there it is. I was like, is that it? But 
I, it's quite heavy, the steel one. I, I can see why they had this. Was it a carbon one they did? I think it was a carbon one they did. I couldn't find one. Um, but it's, it's quite weighty, actually. It's a lot heavier than the one on the TC3 or the TT01 or anything like that. But anyway, now, see there? It says to put lubricant uh, in there, in between the bearing and the axle shaft. Now, I'm not going to do this because I remember the axle shaft was exposed. If you have any grease or oil at all, anywhere that's exposed, it's just a magnet for dirt. So I'm not going to bother with that. There's no way I'll be doing that. So, here and on. Axle shaft through there. Oh, I should be doing it under the camera, Mike. It's a learning experience. I've never done a build video before, I don't think. Well, I did uh, a little bit with the, the, the pro line, but it wasn't like this. And one of the actual shafts has already escaped me. There it is. It's the chassis. And that one goes that side of it as well. So they're supposed to be keeping the bearings in at the moment. Boom. Boom. The bearings will make a big difference. As I said in the first video, um, the car made... Ah, G2. The car made this of these then. My original one made an absolute racket. It was the loudest RC car in the world, and it could have been because it was running on uh, bushings rather than bearings. That'll be part of it. And it also could be because the, the pinion was probably wearing out because it was the original Tammy pinion. And as anybody who's ever built a Tammy kit knows, the Tammy pinions are horrendous. Now these aren't the right ones. No, these are not the right ones. See, so I'm trying to find these, but you can see there's a sort of cross drive at the back of them, and these have got round splined ones, so it's not them. Jumped the gun a little bit there. Are they in there? No, they're not. So where is the bit I'm looking for? Where is the droid I'm looking for? Ah, wait a minute. For you here. Okay, so the, the G stuff is the is the plastic stuff, is it? Yes, it is. Aha! The G stuff. If all else fails, might read the damn instructions. Huh? Right, what's these ones here? Nice. Nylon, they're actually nylon, I think. They're not plastic. I'm sure they're nylon. You look in there, there's the idler gear. Uh, no, no real burrs there. Or there, nice. So, like I said, I'm not putting any grease or oil on there. Get in there you. Here we are. And then for this one, that one's trying to escape again. Nice. Very nice. Nice. Right, let's try not to roll away, please. Again, lubricant in there. I'm not going to do that. I never lubricate anything that's going to be exposed outside. Why do we need four? Oh, they go in the end. They go on the end. It's a bit... It's not going to hold together because there's nothing to hold it together at the moment. But there we go. They go in the end there. Uh, there we are. This is my magnificent thing that I've built. Aha. Right chassis. So we're going to just leave that and use this one apparently. Oh the sun's coming out. Lovely. As the green has gone away I get a little bit. Again there's some huge burrs on this. My old man, my dad, I'm not sure if he uh, sorted the burrs out. I don't think he would have. It's not really his style. Get it working. Just get it working. Get it working. Just fix it. Doesn't need to look broad. Just fix it. Right. So. Which way around? Do we look at it from there? So yes, we do. Ah, you can see. See the slot there. For the. I assume we just drop this in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Would you? There. Nice. Nice. 
can imagine the bearings making a big difference here. See how that's exposed along the side? Because you get the covers, six screws, the cover, I can see one, two, three, four, ah, five, six, that's it there. Six screws, I can do six screws. Ah, son of a, son of a screw, son of a female screw. Two, how did I end up with seven? Two, four, six, no I didn't, good. Four of them, six of them, sorry, and we need B5, parts B5. Here's the B tree and here's the B5. Right, I'm gonna see if I can get rid of the burrs from the off. Hardy her. Very good. Intermission, camera check. Good. good. Oh, jeez. It's a long time. So it's hard to take, keep track of this uh, of time and everything when you're doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this together, and then we'll uh, pick this up another day, I think, because it's already about half an hour's worth of video. I'm on page six, part five. So, but it was you know there's a lot of half an hour at the start when I lost track of myself a wee bit and the GPM stuff didn't come with instructions, and of course I found out that the or, or rather I should have known actually. So I've used one before, I think, but um, discovered that the speed controller had Tamiya plugs on it, which I do not like, even though this is going to be a Tamiya car, but electronics are electronics, there's nothing, I'm not being sacrilegious, but not using Tamiya plugs. So that just holds that in there. See, it's not sealed, although it looks like it's maybe sealed, you know, you could put, you could put uh, Lubricant in it. That's not sealed. That's not a sealed drivetrain. And there will, and I promise you, if you if you put grease in there, it will absolutely get dirt and grit on it. Absolutely. These take a lot of leverage because they're not. You've got to self-tap them. You've got to tap them yourself. There is. Uh, they're not threaded. This is uh, part of the snap-on toolkit I've had for probably 15, 16 years. My best friend got me it when I was maybe 14 years old or something. That's, I don't know if you can see there, but that end is really worn. So I'll maybe stop using this. I've got my Halford Professional set of tools, and Halford Professional is actually really good tools. They don't have anything like the reputation of snap-on, but, um, you know, they're perfectly adequate. And I think they've still got a lifetime warranty. I'm pretty sure they've got a lifetime warranty. So I'll use my, my Halford, because this is a much better, I'd say this is a much better fit now for these screws as well, because that one's worn out. So. I think I'll use this one from now on. Always have the right tool for the job, they say. Now, the last thing, C7, is, is uh, in here somewhere. Uh, C7. What's this? Have we, I mean, we got B here? Oh, we got C here. Looking for this part. That's it there, I think. C, yeah, that's it. C7, that's the one. Again, get rid of the bar. Okay. Now this should be much easier now that I've used the correct size of screwdriver that isn't knackered. So, straighten up for the camera again, sorry, bad habit. Ah, so it doesn't set, I'm going to actually start it or it will move. Darn, darn, darn it all. Wait a minute, wait, 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 please, 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 please. Yes! Magnetic, yes! So small things in life, you know, like a magnetic screwdriver. These things can just make your day sometimes. They just, it's just fantastic. Right, magnetic screw, look at that. It's so much better. Nice and snug. There we go. So, that's us now reach what looks like the, the differential on the gearbox. So, we will leave it there. We've got the two halves, sort of, half assembled. The drive shaft's in. And then we'll pick up later on because this is taking way longer than I expected. So, thanks for sticking with me and we'll catch you again soon. Take care of yourselves. See you later. Cheers! Cheers.